If you don't know Darren Barnes, he's an American record holder, junior worlds, and Pan American medalist in Olympic weightlifting. However, last year, Darren contacted me saying he couldn't perform the clean lift anymore without extreme pain in his left shoulder. An MRI revealed a partial thickness tear of the supraspinatus tendon and tendinopathy of the infraspinatus. However, not every tiny tear requires surgery to recover, so we started physical therapy. During our evaluation, you can see Darren has a ton of shoulder mobility that was 100% pain-free. However, when I performed some basic strength tests for the back of the shoulder muscles, like the mid-trap and the low-trap, he struggled to keep his arm up. When standing, he also showed left-sided weakness with external rotation. When testing this rotation strength in an elevated position, he was pretty strong on the right, but again, fairly weak on his left. You see, the shoulder joint is basically a small golf ball sitting on top of a tee, which is your shoulder blade socket. Our evaluation uncovered an imbalance where the muscles on the back side of the shoulder were not nearly as strong as the muscles on the front side. This leads to poor tracking of the shoulder joint in excessive stress over time on certain tissues when the arm is elevated, like when catching a clean or jerking the barbell overhead. One of the main goals, therefore, with physical therapy was to improve shoulder strength and stability. On the first day, we started with simple banded external rotation drills, like you're seeing here, holding the end range for 5 to 10 seconds to prime stability. He then performed some simple prone lateral raises, focusing on starting the movement with his shoulder blade pulling in before the arm move out to the side and holding in this elevated position for 5 seconds. While in the same lying position, he then did a prone external rotation drill in an elevated position, focusing on starting the motion with his shoulder blade and then maintaining that stability in the posterior shoulder as he rotated back to a high five position, again holding for a few seconds before then reversing back down. Over the next few weeks, we progressed to starting some elevated kettlebell upside down carries, external rotation walkouts with a punch and hold, diagonal raises called D2 flexion, some bamboo bar presses, and a drill called the wall matrix with a band, focusing on slowly returning the arm to the start position with complete control. One of Darren's favorite exercises was the external rotation lift. He externally rotated the shoulders and then maintained this lateral shoulder tension before then punching his elbows upwards, similar to an elevated position his arm would be in when receiving a barbell in the clean. One month into training, we finally grabbed a barbell and performed some cleans, now 100% pain-free. We even moved up to 50 kilos the next visit, and these were the first pain-free cleans he had done in months. Now, his rehab wasn't all pain-free without any bumps in the road. A few weeks into returning to lifting, he noticed some pain returning. When re-examining his positioning from behind, you can see that his left shoulder blade wasn't moving as much out to the side as his right. This is often due to an underactive or poorly controlled serratus anterior muscle. If the shoulder blade doesn't rotate out sufficiently, it can lead to an impingement within the shoulder joint. We started to include the wall slide exercise into our treatment plan to help improve this desired movement. I like to cue athletes to reach their shoulder blades around their torso and push their body away from the wall slightly, almost rounding the upper back as the roller slides up the wall. Another cue is to think about your shoulder blades rotating up and around your body. I would assist with this movement early on by pushing his shoulder blades on the first few reps. He then noticed an instant decrease in pain following this drill and even worked up the next week to a pain-free 111 kilo clean and jerk, the first time doing this weight in months. Yeah, buddy. I also noticed at this time that he started presenting also with some lat stiffness on his left side. You can see he was unable to move his arm as high over his head with his arm in an externally rotated position compared to an internally rotated position. Remember, the lats are powerful internal rotators, so if inflexible, they won't allow the shoulder to elevate and externally rotate, which means that it can lead to impingement within the shoulder joint. To address this problem, I gave him five sets of 10 second lat stretches with a PVC pipe, working on rounding his upper back, pulling the hips under the body, and feeling a stretch along the lateral armpit where the lats run. He then followed these up with eccentric lat pull-ups, 
jumping up and then slowly lowering himself down for five seconds. Retesting after showed great improvements in lat flexibility, showing these exercises were going to be very effective at improving this new weak link. Higher level rehab later in our working together included the following for Darren. Kettlebell cleans with an upside down position, working on creating instant stability. Also, external rotation presses, where he would row to a parallel position, maintain posterior shoulder stability, before then rotating back to a 90 degree L and then pressing the arm overhead. Darren continued to lift in clinic and build his tolerance for heavier and heavier weights at this time and actually finished his very last day with a huge 132 clean, completely pain-free. He was done with physical therapy at this time and ready to start training for the next world championships.